If you stand inside a medieval barn, church, or timber hall and look closely at the beams overhead, you're seeing a quiet contradiction. That wood has endured centuries of rain, frost, insects, and seasonal damp, yet modern structures built with treated lumber often fail in a few decades. This is not because medieval builders had better trees or mystical knowledge. It is because they understood rot as a process, not a defect, and they designed their buildings to interrupt that process at every stage. The trick they used has largely been forgotten, not because it stopped working, but because modern construction took a different philosophical path. Stay with this, because the medieval solution is not a coating or a product. It is a way of thinking about wood that still outperforms modern shortcuts. Why medieval builders assumed rot was inevitable unless actively prevented. Medieval builders worked in a world without chemical preservatives, pressure treatment or synthetic sealants. Wood was precious, labour was expensive, and failure carried real consequences. Because of this, they did not assume wood would last on its own. They assumed rot would occur unless deliberately controlled. This mindset led them to focus less on blocking moisture entirely and more on denying rot the conditions it needs to survive. Fungal decay requires sustained moisture, oxygen, and accessible nutrients. Medieval builders attacked all three, often without realizing they were doing so in biological terms. You know, modern construction often ignores this balance and relies almost entirely on moisture barriers. So, how timber selection quietly determined lifespan before construction began. The rot-proofing process, well, it actually started in the forest. Medieval carpenters, they favoured slow-grown trees from harsher environments. Dense grain meant fewer pathways for water to travel, you see. And, quite often, trees were felled in winter, when sap content was low. Sap contains sugars that fungi consume. By cutting trees when sap was minimal, medieval builders reduced decay potential before the wood ever dried. This single decision, honestly, could add decades to a beam's lifespan. Today, this can be applied by choosing dense lumber, avoiding overly fast-grown timber, and recognizing that grain structure matters more than surface smoothness. Why seasoning wood was treated as structural engineering, not storage? Fresh wood was not trusted. It was seasoned deliberately, stacked off the ground with airflow on all sides, and protected from standing rain. This process could take months or years, depending on the timber's purpose. The goal was not just dryness, but stability. Slow seasoning prevented deep cracks that trap moisture later. Cracks are not cosmetic flaws. They are rot incubators. These days, modern builders often rush this step, you know. But allowing wood to dry slowly and evenly remains one of the most effective rot prevention measures available, even now. Now, how did medieval surface treatment harden wood without sealing it? Well, one of the most misunderstood medieval practices was surface modification rather than surface coating. Light charring, scraping, and weather seasoning, these methods altered the outer layer of wood permanently. So, charring closed surface pores reduced capillary water absorption and destroyed fungal spores. 
Lime washing, on the other hand, created an alkaline surface hostile to insects and decay organisms. These treatments really hardened wood while keeping it breathable. Unlike modern sealants, they did not rely on perfect coverage. They could wear without failing catastrophically. To apply this today, lightly char exposed surfaces or use lime-based finishes on appropriate structures, always ensuring the wood can still breathe. Why medieval buildings were designed to dry faster than they got wet? The true rot-proofing trick was architectural. Medieval buildings were engineered to shed water relentlessly and promote drying everywhere. Roofs were steep, eaves were wide, timber was lifted clear of soil, walls were ventilated. Water was expected to enter during storms. The critical factor was how quickly it left afterward. Drying speed, you know, mattered more than waterproofing. Modern builders can adopt this by increasing roof overhangs, elevating wood from ground contact and eliminating flat surfaces where water pools. How joinery prevented hidden decay for generations. Medieval joinery avoided trapping moisture. Mortise and tenon joints were shaped to drain. Wooden pegs swelled when wet tightening joints naturally without splitting surrounding fibres. Metal fasteners were used sparingly because, well, they attracted condensation and created internal rot zones. Where movement was needed, wood met wood. This approach allowed structures to flex without cracking, you know, reducing pathways for moisture and decay. Why breathable protection outlasted sealed protection? Natural oils, tars and waxes were used sparingly and only on fully dried wood. These treatments slowed water absorption without trapping moisture inside. Modern sealants often fail because they create impermeable skins. When those skins crack, water enters and becomes trapped, accelerating decay invisibly. Breathable protection fails gradually and visibly, allowing repair before structural damage spreads. How medieval structures aged without collapsing. When decay did occur, it progressed slowly and predictably. Individual timbers could be repaired or replaced. The structure itself remained sound. This repairability was not a flaw. It was, in fact, a feature. Medieval builders expected maintenance and, well, designed for it. Modern sealed systems often hide decay until failure is sudden and, you know, catastrophic. Why did modern builders, you know, forget this trick? Well, industrialization started to favor speed, uniformity, and honestly, products over the process itself. Rot prevention became something you just applied at the end, instead of building it in from the very start. The medieval logic was sort of lost, because it simply didn't fit the demands of mass production. Yet the physics and biology, well, they've not changed at all. So why does this medieval trick still matter today? As climate extremes increase, and yeah, moisture cycles get more intense, breathable and resilient systems are becoming more valuable, not less. Wood that can get wet and dry safely 
will always, always outlast wood that relies on perfect sealing. If this guide has helped reconnect you with the medieval rot-proofing wisdom that modern builders, you know, forgot, do consider subscribing to Backyard Wisdom for more practical history that still works today. And please share this with anyone building, restoring or relying on wood to endure far beyond a single generation.